Hi, I'm Nate Moore. This is Excel Video 197. We've been through the function library and done all kinds of functions for a while. Now what I want to do is spend a few minutes in the formula auditing section and show you some of the tools that Excel has to help audit the results of the functions and the formulas that you've used. Before I get into what I want to talk about today, just uh, a brief warning that Excel has a bunch of tools that can catch a variety of problems but there's no way Excel can catch all of the logical problems or the data entry problems or some of the other problems that can happen on your spreadsheet. What I'm going to show you some good tools to help but it is absolutely no substitute for making sure you understand what the spreadsheet's trying to do, that the logic makes sense, that the numbers are entered properly, that the data is right coming into the spreadsheet because Excel is going to take what you give it and run but and not catch a lot of the data entry logic kind of errors. All that said, what I want to talk about today are two tools that can help you tr um, track what's going on in your spreadsheet. The first one is called Trace Precedence. It's right up here and I've got this this cell with an error message. I'm trying to figure out my expected collection percentage which is the total number of procedures times the average bill charge times the average collection percentage. That's how much I ought to be able to collect. And I've got this error here and I want to know why. One way to attack it is to click Trace Precedence. And the precedence are simply the cells that drive the formula that's in cell H6. You'll see the blue lines are from cells that don't have an error, and the red line is what Excel's flagging. You say, hey, watch this one. This is where my error is. And sure enough, this is where the divide by zero arrow starts that's propagating and ending up over here in my cell H6. So now that I know that, I can come back over here and I can look at cell H6 and I can try to figure out what's going on here. And I can see it's B3 divided by B4. And, oh, I don't have a cell. I used to have a value here. Somehow I must have deleted it by accident or somebody deleted it. I've got 300 procedures in here. I'm going to put that back. And now my divide by zero errors go away and I'm back. When you're done with these arrows, it's simply a matter of clicking remove arrows and they go away. If you want to look on, go in the other direction, precedents are the cells that drive the answer in the current cell. If you want to know what cells are driven by the answer in the current cell. Go in the other, go in the other direction. Instead of looking back and saying what caused, what caused the cell to be what it is, looking forward now and say what cells does this cell impact? That's a dependence. So we can go, let's pick on this cell here, my average collection percentage, 42.5%. If I click trace dependence, these are the two cells in my spreadsheet that are based on this cell. So if I go through and delete this, that will tell me, hey, you know what you're going to, impact your expected collection percentage and you've got some logic in an if function down here that is going to be impacted if you delete this cell. So trace precedence looks back and says what cells impact the cell I'm working on like we did here. Trace dependence says what cells are impacted by the cell I'm currently in and that's what we're doing in the average collection percentage. You can click remove arrows and that will get rid of everything or if you just want to remove the precedent arrows or just remove the dependent arrows you can remove them one step at a time. That's what I wanted to show you first, trace precedence and trace dependence. I've got a text box and a note here about error checking. We've been through these boxes here. Error checking is this guy right here, and that's what we'll talk about next time. Look forward to seeing you then.